Okay, so Rachel Boynton, tell us who you are. Uh, I'm an independent producer and director. I live in New York City. And I made this film called Big Men about the quest for oil in West Africa that looks specifically at Ghana and Nigeria. Why did you choose Ghana and Nigeria? That was sort of happenstance. I actually originally intended to make the whole film in Nigeria. Um, I, back in 2005, I finished my first film as a director. It was called Our Brand is Crisis. Uh, What's called? What's it that again? Our brand is crisis. It's about our a, brand is crisis. That's right. Okay. It's about a group of American political consultants, including James Carville, if you know who he yeah, is. Yeah, I do. Kind I of know Bill Clinton's. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. I followed them as they went to Bolivia mm -hmm. and ran a presidential campaign for a guy who wanted to be president of Bolivia. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a great story, and it turned into a crazy story. There was like a revolution, and and actually the the rights for that film ultimately got bought by George Clooney and his company to be remade as a fiction feature that supposedly Sandra Bullock is starring in, so we're all waiting to see what that will be. But that was my first film. Um, when I finished it, everybody was really happy with the film, but I was kind of dissatisfied. I thought I could do better. I wanted to do something bigger and harder, and just on a personal level, I, you know, I'm a woman and I wanted to have children, and I had just gotten married and I didn't have kids. And so I felt like I was at a point in my life where I could do something kind of crazy. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to do the craziest thing I can think of. I want to make a film about oil from inside. I want to go and get permission from an oil company and film inside an oil company and see what that looks like. Because at the time, everyone was talking about oil, but I wasn't seeing anything from inside the companies because they wouldn't let anyone go inside. So that was the origin of the idea. It didn't start with Ghana or Nigeria necessarily. It started with this notion of, I'm going to get into the oil business. How did you get permission to? Did you know people in Cosmos? Did you? I didn't know anyone so in the oil. husband work there? No, no, my husband's a fiction filmmaker. I um, Originally, I thought I was going to make the whole film in Nigeria. I started doing some research. And these ideas were coming to me in like 2005, 2006. And at exactly that moment, this militancy was emerging in Nigeria, and these militants were blowing up pipelines and kidnapping oil workers, and I thought to myself, okay, there's got to be a movie there, right? That's exciting. There are people running around with guns. I'm going to go and follow a company in Nigeria dealing with that crisis, because I know I'll end up with a film. I mean, as a filmmaker, you need to, you're kind of, you're almost like a tornado chaser. You're, you're trying to go to a place where you think there might be conflict or where there might be a story. Um, especially with the kind of film that I make, because I make something called verite films, which, or at least I have to date, which is when you, they're quite hard to make, because you have to get permission, number one, you have to get into the room, and then you have to follow things as they unfold over time. So everything in the film actually happened in front of the camera. So when did you decide that it, it has to be Cosmos as the company to go inside yeah. and the, the countries are Ghana and Nigeria? I didn't originally think of Cosmos. Um, I did hear about Cosmos because people were talking about them. They were just starting as a company. They were known as people who could find oil. Um, there was a company called Triton Energy, and the same guys had all worked together at Triton Energy back in the 90s and had been the first people to discover oil in Equatorial Guinea. So they were known, and like in the industry people were talking about them. And I wrote them a bunch of letters and they never replied to me. And then I went to this thing called the Offshore Technology Conference in Houston in 2007, and I filmed. And I filmed a panel discussion about local content in Nigeria, and Brian Maxted was on this panel. So I filmed the panel, and I filmed him on this panel, and afterwards he signed my release form. And I had written Brian many emails, and he'd never replied to me. But now I had his release form. So I wrote to him, and he replied to me. And a few months later, that was April, May 2007, a few months later they drilled their first well here. In Ghana. And they, that's right, and they discovered Jubilee. So then Ghana became important. That's right. Okay. So then, mm -hmm. then I went to them and I said, hey, I've got this idea, I want to film you. Let me follow you. And my first choice was let me follow you in Nigeria because they were actually trying to work in Nigeria at the time. Um, but they decided to say yes to Ghana. And the thing to remember about Cosmos at the time, the truth is, I think if I asked Cosmos today, they would never let me film. Because today, Cosmos is like every other company. They're a big, publicly held oil company. But you think then they, were, they wanted to be big, so this was good publicity for them? Well, maybe that's why. I think the real reason why they could is because it was six guys, basically, who started the company. It was privately held. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any shareholders. And the guy who was the CEO at the time was this guy named Jim Musselman. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of a cowboy, risk-taking, you know, poker-playing guy who 
liked the idea of a movie and who was okay with the idea of risk because there are certain rules when I come in and film that I, I'm very open about from the beginning. Number one, I own all my footage. Mm -hmm. Number two, they don't get to see the movie before it's finished. And number three, if they want me to stop filming, I will stop filming, they just need to ask me, and that I won't film without their permission. So those are the rules. Okay, so when did you finish filming all that? My last shoot was, well, the last Verite shoot was in May 2011, when they went public. And, and you're not, you show, when did you first show it? In 2013, it premiered. The okay, very so last shoot was in the fall of, of 2011. So you, did, you had some two years to put it together? Yeah, about and, a year and, and a half. And the circumstances of those two years, the political changes in Ghana and, yeah. and the political um, situation, circumstance in Ghana may have given different interpretations to different aspects of the film. For As sure. you can imagine, now, yesterday, um, Minister Otenje was quite unhappy. Yes, and this was. is the former Minister of Energy, who was Minister of Energy at the time he filmed and who happened to be in the movie, mm -hmm. he was quite unhappy uh, with Why what he saw. Why you think he was unhappy? I'm That's what the radio reported and he was... No, he know, was. Kind of, I was there. Yeah. He was very unhappy. But let me ask you, did, when you were filming him, for instance, yeah. uh, was it on the customer's mandate or did he have to no, 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 agree no, no. that you filmed the Ministry of Energy, for instance? I'm sorry, I don't understand. When you were filming him in conversations with customers, yeah, yeah. was it an extension of customers' mandate to you to film? Did you tell him no, that? No, Cosmos I'm, didn't have a I'm mandate filming, to me to you know. film. I wasn't Cosmos's filmmaker. I understand, but how I mean, did you get to film him when he was on the phone, for instance? Who? Minister of TNJ. Did I film him on the phone? Oh, he wasn't talking? I actually did film him on the phone, but I don't think it's in the movie. There's, uh, there, there's a scene that I have him talking on the phone. What I'm asking is, did you get his permission? Did he know you were going <laughs> Yeah, to of course I got his permission, because here's the deal. Mm -hmm. As an I, this is kind of weird in Ghana, I know. Mm -hmm. But in America, there's a long tradition of independent filmmaking. Okay. There's like, it's, there are a bunch of us, it's not just me. Mm -hmm. and, and we all are sort of, for example, a, a shorter version of the film is going to be on PBS in America. Mm -hmm. In order for your film to be on PBS in America, you have to prove your independence. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you're not allowed to, to work for an oil company. And I mean, if you do that, that's I fine, I but then you're making advertising. I that, that minister knew that he was being filmed and you, you had his permission to I, do that. I never filmed anybody. He didn't anybody. complain about permission anyway, but yesterday, yeah. uh, at, the, at, the, at the executive premiere, yeah. he was unhappy. He was very unhappy. Yeah. He was very upset. Why I, do you I, think? Honestly, I'm kind of confused by the whole thing because I actually think he comes off quite well in the film. And I had pursued him. I had really wanted to show the film to him. I have this thing where it's important to me to show the people who are in the film the film. So I, I had very much wanted him to be at the screening. I was glad he was there. I, I just saw it just now. Do you, do you know what I think? What do you think? Do you want to know? Tell me, yeah. I get the sense that you portrayed Cosmos yeah. in the film as a company that was being harangued by the government of Ghana, well, needlessly. In, no, I think in the film, that is their perspective. See, the thing about the film is it does give Cosmos a lot of time to speak, but it also gives a lot of other people time to speak. So Cosmos is in the film saying, we think we're being harassed. But then, you know, to me, Joe Tangajay is, is the guy in the film who's saying, listen, this isn't, because Cosmos is up there saying, this is a question of corruption, right? And Joe Tengajay comes up and he says, this isn't about corruption. This is about fighting for the benefit of the people of Ghana. We're interested in trying to get more benefit for the people of Ghana. That's his major message in the film. To me, that's not... Well, but Cosmos were being investigated for the, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, which that's is right. a big deal in America. But in America, you know, okay, I, I am not privy to all of the facts surrounding the origin of, in fact, I don't even think Cosmos knows what the exact origin of the accusation was. It came from Anadarko, but why Anadarko decided two years in to make those accusations is a mystery, basically. Nobody quite knows. Well, but that's what I'm saying, that so not, nothing about your doing or yeah. deliberately creating anything. I'm just saying to you that the, the impression that one gets out of the film, one yeah. is that Cosmos have been exonerated, uh -huh. that they were being, well, they were, they were being harassed they, and, and they the harassment had no basis. They never That's came one. up with evidence but the and other they one, never which tried is, them. The other That's one which the is truth. critical for politics in Ghana is that yeah. the new NDC administration, you portrayed them to be witch hunting President Kufo, that, that, that they were looking for evidence against President Kufo and they were using this foreign car practice act and that also no. turned out to be a hoax. And no. so President Kufo looks clean after the event. 
Well, I don't think, I, again, there's somebody in the film who says that. That is definitely said in the film, but it's not the only perspective in the film. There is a guy in the film who says this is a witch hunt, it's because they don't like Kufour. And then there are other people in the film who say exactly the opposite. This isn't about a witch hunt, this is about trying to get a fair deal for the country and trying to figure out transparency. Both sides are present in the film. So Cosmos look so, good, Ghanaian authorities look bad. I, the, well, I think I worked extremely hard to make a very balanced film and honestly I'm still kind of confused about why the minister was so upset. Because to me, and frankly, in America, like according to all the reviews in America, everybody has seen this as an incredibly balanced film. You know, in Ghana it's a little different because people here know all the details, right? And there, there are a lot of politics involved and political passions. So of course the perception is going to be different, you know? And I'm not Ghanaian, so I don't have the same, I, I don't necessarily perceive the same things that, that you might. But you also interviewed Chrissy Pratt, just, I did. just to tell you the, yeah. uh, the preponderance of this, this yeah. cosmos look good, Ghanaian government look bad. He seems to share the same view. Now, he said to, to journalists that um, this was an agenda. You know. I, I'm a little confused about that, too. I like Kwesi very much. I, I, I want to see, I told Kwesi myself, I'd love to see him make a documentary. I really respect his passion. I think he's um, a really remarkable person. The one issue I have with Kwesi is that he gets his facts wrong sometimes and he needs to do more fact checking. But I'm a little confused about why he was angry with the film too because frankly I think he looks he said, really he good He said you had them. an agenda and, and sort of that fits I, with... I, you know, I have to of, say, I, I mean I don't... My agenda, you want to know what my agenda is yes, with the film? Yes, please. My agenda with the film is to make the point, this film for me isn't... We're getting lost in details. This film is a massive film and it was really hard to make and it's, a, it's an epic endeavor, right? This is not a film about Ghana. This is not a film about Nigeria. This is a film about a system and the way things work. There's a certain way that things work in the world right now. And that's what the movie's about. It's about private capital and national governments and the people of countries. And the question of how contracts are, are written, why they're written the way they're written, who gets what in terms of profit, what the justification for that is, and are the people of these countries ultimately going to benefit from their resources? To me, that is the question that matters here. All of this other stuff, I don't really care about. Why did you title it Big Men? Because... Which connotes then an exploitation of people. Oh, no, it doesn't. Not, well, most well, of not the books that have been written and, no, and titled Big Men about no, Africa is... No, no, is, no, no, you know. no. Big Men is the perfect title for this movie because the, the tagline of the film is everyone wants to be big. The film, you weren't there for the beginning, mm. but the film opens with two quotes. The first quote is from a guy named Milton Friedman. Mm -hmm. And it's about, oh gosh, I, I don't think I can recite it from memory, but it's about essentially everyone is working in the world according to their own self-interest. Um, it's always the other guy who's greedy. Yes, but the big You're man, never the one big man who knows the self-interest question. Well, that's what the yeah, movie is about. And, and so big man is not, it's a derogatory term. Really, it's not. It's not. Um, it's, it's a, not a it's complimentary both, term. Well, but it's it's also the reality. As 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 the king says, the uh, I don't know if you saw this part, but there's a Nigerian king in the film, mm -hmm. who says, "I say to him, it seems to me that a lot of people in Nigeria want to be big," and he looks at me and he says, "And you too, you would want to be big too, wouldn't you? It's human nature to want to basically better yourself and to have more, and that's the that's what the film is about." But when you are talking about government officials and people who represent this government to have film. a mandate from the people and you sort of describe all but of them as the big men. That's the reality. That's, the reality that's derogatory. Is, no, it's reality. It's not derogatory, it's fact. The reality is self-interest does in many ways, except perhaps with mothers and children, self-interest really does kind of rule the world. Well, but, but if self-interest is ruling the world with officials in Ghana, uh, that's illegal because they are not elected it's, for self-interest. The American not, president does that too, this, does he? When you we're, say we're still does kind it, of, we're does still, it include everybody? It includes absolutely everybody. The thing that officials most, in America. Let me finish. The mm. most important thing here is that there are checks and balances. Yes. Listen, here's the thesis of the film. Okay, mm. the thesis of the film is basically everyone has self-interest. You cannot assume that anyone is going to act like an angel. It is therefore incredibly important to have policies and laws in place that protect the people. You need to have laws, and then not only do you need to have laws that protect the people, you need to enforce them. 
and you need to make sure that people are held accountable. That is the only way, it is the only way that people are going to benefit from their resources. To me, this is the point of the movie. Okay, All so the point you're making is that doesn't matter. The every, only every thing that man, matters every is the man, Every person for called man has a, a natural self-interest appetite. Yes. What we can do is to have the checks and balances and the institutions working properly to yes, check it. that's right. That, that's what you say is the theme of the film. Absolutely. How does that apply to Cosmos? Well, I would say in, in terms of corporations in general, not just Cosmos, but any corporation, I think, you know, there's an argument that they're giving you money, like not you personally, but uh, if there's a country that needs um, to develop a resource. Frequently it happens that those countries that need to develop resources don't have the money to do that on their own or they don't have the technology, right? So they need help from overseas. So they need money from somewhere else. This is exactly the situation with Cosmos. And, you know, if you're a place like Ghana where no one's found oil before, you're considered a super high risk and no one's really interested in taking that risk unless they're going to be very well rewarded for the risk, okay? This is said over and over again on the phone. So these corporations come and they're willing to take the risk if they get a really big piece of the pie, okay? Okay. Now, now it's up to Ghana. It is up to Ghana to decide if you want to do that deal or not, okay? And there are certain, if, there are certain things that Ghana can do legally and contractually ahead of time to protect their own interests. And to me, those are the things that need to be examined. For example, you guys, I know that there are laws being examined right now about how contracts should be awarded in Ghana. You want to make sure that those processes are really competitive. Okay. We'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll do that, uh, uh, Rachel. But um, why did you in the movie remind us of the contest in election 2008 between the Professor Mills, who was yeah. the eventual winner, and, and yeah. uh, Nana Kufado? Why did you remind us in the film of that contest? Well, it's a verite film. Mm -hmm. So it's a film, I mean, one of the things that's really special about the film is that it follows things over time. And the idea behind this kind of filmmaking is that you're essentially recording history, right? That by being in a place at a particular time and recording what happens, you're preserving history for the future. And so this film, one of the things I'm very proud of is it took me a very long time to make it, but I followed events. I started filming in 2007 and I followed them through 2011. That's a very long period of time to be filming. But that period of time is captured on film and that's what the mm. film is about. If your critics say to you that why didn't you as an American film the activities of Hairs, Cosmos, ExxonMobil. Well, they never uh, would have given in, me this in, access. In, in you Houston. think ExxonMobil would have allowed me to well, film like Cosmos? In, in, in Houston, what for other instance, oil companies Cosmos's you know? activities in America. Why did, did you focus on two, two African countries? Did you intend to show how bad things are in these oh. African countries? No, no, no. But this is so a why film Why did you about film it in America? I'm sorry, this is a film about... You're kind of missing the point of the movie. The f this is a film about the quest for oil here. It's not a film about the quest for oil in, in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's a film about the quest for oil here. Why did you select that theme? Because well, oil is everywhere in the world. Yeah, no, there's no, no. oil in the, the Gulf Absolutely. of Mexico. You said that there's oil in the Middle East. Absolutely. Yes, you didn't go there. No, I yeah. actually... There's oil in Brazil. Do you want to hear why I picked? Close to you. Absolutely. Do you want to hear why I picked? Yes, I want to hear it. I picked here because back in 2006, when I first started thinking about this film, George W. Bush was in power. And he had a policy in place. Like, it was well known that there was be emphasis being put on the idea that America should get more of its oil from West Africa. Yes. Lots of, lots of countries, lots of companies were putting a lot of money into the region. Okay, so at the time, this region was considered, quote unquote, a new frontier mm -hmm. because it was relatively underexplored. And there aren't that many places left in the world that are relatively underexplored. So I decided to, to look for a film here. Okay, that was the original, like I said in the beginning, that was my original idea. I then started doing some research. And at the same time, this militancy was popping up in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Guys running around with AK-47s, blowing up pipelines and kidnapping oil workers. And my thought was, okay, there has to be a movie there. Like, that's kind of exciting, right? Don't you okay. want to go and see okay. a movie there? I get it. So my thought was, I was going to follow an American oil company operating in the Niger Delta. That was the original idea for the film. And I put an enormous amount of effort trying to get access to an oil company in the Niger Delta. Let me tell you something. Oil companies do not normally open their doors to independent filmmakers, especially when the independent filmmaker is saying, you don't have control of the movie. It's almost impossible. I've never heard of it happening ever before. The only way it happened was with Cosmos Energy because 
they were independent. They weren't publicly held, and it was just six guys sitting around a table who said so yes. So you mean Cosmos today, it being publicly held, will not? Will I don't not think they would do this again. Yeah. That's my guess. Congratulations, then you did a good job by getting the permission. Well, I think it's also a very brave thing for them to say. Did yes. you also make money from the film? Not yet. I hope I do. Not yet. I'm, not yet. So no. who's paying for all of that? Coming to Ghana, going to America. Home? This was yes. sponsored by Oxfam and Friends of the Nation. Um, and well, I mean, the, the the money came from Oxfam, but it, it the idea was I, I've been wanting to show the film in Ghana for the longest time. It actually premiered in America back in 2013, and I haven't had the money to come. And I have two children too, so my travel schedule has gotten a little wacky. Mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, Oxfam made it possible with their partners. So are you going to sell the rights? Do you want to sell the rights? What do you mean sell the rights? The rights in the film. Your rights in the film. Do you want to sell it? What do you mean? I don't understand. No, you have the, the film. This copyrighted to you. Yeah. Do you want to sell that? Well, I mean, listen, everyone, everyone would like to make money. Everyone wants to be big, so right? Can I make you an offer now? Sure. How much do you want to pay me for my film? Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Thank you. Have you learned to do that when you came to Cincinnati? I together? try. You I try. try. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. All right. It's a pleasure talking to you. It's a pleasure talking flight. to you too. See you soon. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.